What's going on guys? Spencer here with HM Massage, back with another video. Today we're talking about the chair massage. Chair massage is a very effective type of massage in recruiting more clients, getting your name out there. It's effective because it's mobile and you can still do a lot of body work on somebody in a short amount of time. So here are my top five favorite massage techniques to do during a chair massage. The first technique is spine walking. This is the most common technique you'll see, and no, we're not pushing directly on their spine, but we're working all of the musculature around their spine, all the way from their neck, all the way down to the low back, to their sacrum. The muscles that run along the side of your spine are called the erector spinaeus group, and these muscles are responsible for holding us up all day, and so they're going to get very tired and tight on everybody. So they're very effective to work, and you can do so with a flat palm pushing in. You can make a knuckle and push in with the knuckle for deeper pressure, or you can start to twist your hands and knuckles to create both a pushing and a pulling feel on the muscles. Make sure to go slow and take your time sinking into their back muscles, and up around the shoulder blades, you can even work further out to the edge and actually target some of the rotator cuffs, their deltoids, more of their traps, and once again their lats and teres group. This is a fantastic warm-up move as well as an awesome transition move when you're going to be transitioning between the body parts. Transitioning to number two, we have the neck work and the upper shoulder and trap work. This technique is really effective when you move your body to stand in front of the chair and then using pressure in your whole body weight to push into their traps, into the base of their neck, the suboccipitals, and using your fingers and knuckles to warm up the whole neck as well. The muscles at the top of the shoulder, as everyone knows, carries a lot of stress, is responsible for a lot of headaches, and they're constantly bringing our shoulders up to our ears. So any compression work, either with your knuckles, with your flat palms squeezing and rocking their shoulders as you do it, or more specific finger work and knuckle work, all of that compression and petrissage is going to be a very effective move and it's going to feel really awesome. You can also step to the side and do more specific petrissage and trigger point holds on their neck targeting it from a different angle and alleviating more stress and getting rid of more knots. If you're confident in your ability to use forearms and elbows, this is also a great area to throw in a nice forearm hold or an elbow hold for some really deep muscle work. And people love that. Technique three is during your transitions, be sure to quickly stop by and work down in their lower back particularly a sacrum shake. Use your thumbs and rub circles right around the sides of their sacrum. You can use your fingertips or the flat part of your thumb, the thumb pad. All of these areas give a nice specific pinpoint feel that help to alleviate the low back tendons around the sacrum and the low back QL muscles. Also, feel free to use either a flat palm or knuckles and work into the hips and the glutes a little bit because those are often also tight and you'll never be able to alleviate low back pain if you don't work their hips and glutes as well. So give a nice sacrum shake, give some specific work there, and then do a bit of hip and glute work before moving on. Number four is make sure to work their arms. Don't forget about the arm danglies that are on their side. Start with the deltoids. Work down and just squeeze the biceps and triceps, squeezing both sides in between your palm. And then work down into the forearms. Target their flexors, their extensors, the brachioradialis muscle that runs up the thumb side of the forearm. Make sure to do a combination of effleurage and petrissage, which is that lifting and squeezing of the muscles. But also feel free to do some traction and assisted range of motion with them. 
You can do a pin and stretch where you pin down their forearm muscles and then move their wrist. You can spread the palmar fascia in their hands. And on that note, make sure to go down and work their hands. Everyone has tension in their hands. Make sure you target both the thenar and hypothenar eminence, which is your thumb and pinky pad. Give their fingers a nice little pull to get some traction there. Spread out all of the connective tissue. And any area that feels tight, just spend some good time to give it some TLC. People are going to appreciate the extra work you spend on their arms and hands a lot. A little bit can really make your massage go the extra mile. And last, but certainly not least, make sure to end off with an amazing head and scalp massage. I recommend this in almost every one of my massage technique videos. At the end of every massage, people love their head worked. So as long as they're okay with messing up their hair, slowly work up from the base of the neck, hit the suboccipitals, and then work into the head and scalp. Play around with your tempo and your timing, but keep the pressure relatively consistent. So you can start by going a little bit slower. You can do all four fingers. You can do a thumb at any time. You can do the entire palm of your hand, doing a nice rhythmic vibration. And then you can switch up the timing, going a little slower and then a little quicker and then going really fast and then stopping and just doing a hold. Play around with the timing, see what works for you, but I guarantee you the whole entire head massage will work for them. And that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video helped you out in learning some good chair massage techniques. Give it a thumbs up if you liked the video and subscribe to the channel for more content. I'll see you guys on the next video. I hope you have a great rest of your day.